Okay, in this video we're going to look at a proposition involving the order of an element. So let's recall that the order of a modulo n is the smallest number m such that a to the m is equal to is congruent to 1 mod n. So we generally take the GCD of a and n to be 1, but if the GCD is not 1, we could say the order was infinite or something because we'd never get back to 1. But in this case, we will focus on the case and only the case when the GCD of a and n is 1, which is you know, what we've been doing in general. And this proposition looks a little like taking a logarithm. So there is something called the discrete logarithm for stuff like this that we'll look at later, but this is like a precursor to that idea. So the proposition says the following, a to the k is congruent to a to the l mod n if and only if k is congruent to um, k is congruent to l modulo the order of a. So, uh, it's interesting that here we're working mod n, and here we're working mod the order of a. Okay, so let's look at our proof. This is an if and only if statement, so we have to go in both directions. So let's go in this direction first. And what I want to notice here is the following. Let's assume that uh, k is bigger than or equal to L. So we know one has to be uh, bigger than the other, so we might as well uh, assume that K is equal to bigger, uh, be bigger than or equal to L. And now I want to point out why we need to do this. And we want to need to do this so we have no uh, negative exponents. And I'll point out how that will keep us from having no negative exponents. Okay, good. So now what I want to look at is this uh, uh, following product. So I'll look at a to the l times a to the k minus l. Okay, great. So again, in red I said this will ensure that there are no negative exponents, and it did because here we're looking at a to the k minus l, and that will be greater than or equal to zero. Good. So now that this is equal to a to the k, um, by our, uh, by just some exponent rules, and then by assumption, this is equal to a to the l modulo n. Okay, great. So now if we look at the extreme left-hand side, and the extreme right hand side of this uh, modular equivalence, we uh, have one that we can solve. So let's maybe observe the following. So let's observe that the GCD of a to the L and N is equal to one, and that's because the GCD of a and N is equal to one, um, which tells us we can cancel a to the L from both sides. In other words, multiply by the modular inverse of a to the L. So if we cancel a to the L from both sides, that turns this equivalence into a to the K minus L is congruent to one mod N. Great. Um, but then by a previous um, proposition, that tells us that k minus l must divide the order modulo n of a. But that brings us exactly to where we want to be, which is k is congruent to l modulo um, this order, which finishes this direction of the proof. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll do the reverse direction. Okay, so now we're ready for the reverse direction of this proof. So let's suppose that k uh, is congruent to L mod the order of A modulo n. But by the definition of equivalence modulo the order, we get that that means that the order modulo n of A divides k minus l. Okay, good. But that tells us that um, k minus l can be written as um, some sort of uh, number b times the order of n modulo a. 
Okay, great. And then uh, the next thing we want to do is raise a to the k minus l. Great. So uh, I guess here we'll assume, just as we did before, that k is bigger than or equal to l. And we raise a uh, to the k minus l. So that's the same thing as a to the order modulo n of a all to the b. So that's congruent to 1 modulo n by the definition of the order. And the next thing we want to do is multiply both sides by a to the l. So if we multiply both sides of this by a to the l, we end up with a to the k on the left-hand side, and we end up with a to the l mod n on the right-hand side. And that uh, finishes this proof.